Hey everybody, Ryan from Ryan Hockey Channel here. Alright, gonna go over the LA Kings season review. Now, if you have not done so already, hit that subscribe button because it helps the channel out, helps me out, helps these videos out. And make sure to hit that like button as well because that helps out everything as well. And make sure to hit that notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new video. Alright, let's get started with the LA Kings season review. Alright, they finished 25th this year, tied with San Jose for 25th, but they had the tiebreaker, so they finished one spot ahead of them. They were 21, 28, and 7 with 49 points. They had an 18.9 power play percentage, which, for as bad as they were, not bad at all. And that was out of 31, of course. 83.7% on the penalty kill, good enough for tie for 6th out of 31 teams. They had a very good penalty kill this year, and if they keep that up, that's going to help them in the future. 2.54 goals for per game on average, which is bad enough for 27th out of 31. Not a very good offensive team at this point, but they are improving. Then a 3.02 goals against average per game, which is bad enough for 11th out of the 31 teams. So... Not very good in either category. That's what killed them this year. They had 142 goals against and 169 goals. I'm sorry, 142 goals for and 169 goals against. So, the probably the lowest goals against so far out of these bottom teams, which is good. That means they're not absolutely terrible goals against, but not great either. All right, key injuries this season. This one is like saying wind will or hurricane will blow down trees Olimata was injured that's a shocker I don't think anybody is surprised and I don't think anybody noticed either that he played or was missing because he is not the player that was there for Pittsburgh a few years back I think after that concussion he took in the playoffs I don't think he's been the same guy upcoming UFAs no 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 so this team is pretty solid right now. I mean, their core is pretty set and they got a lot of young guys coming up. Now for RFAs, four. That's all they have that are worth note. I mean, there are a few more in the minors, but they're not anybody who's going to potentially make this team or played a few games for them this year. Uh, Andreas Anthony CU, I think that's one they will definitely resign. He had a very good year for them. Trevor Moore, same thing. Very good year. I think they'll re-sign him. Matt Laff, I think they'll re-sign him. And Leish Anderson, I think I think they'll re-sign him. I think they'll give him another year, see if he can do it. If not, let him go. Or they may do that this year. I don't know. Maybe he goes back to Sweden. Terrible contracts. Now, before you attack me, Kings fans, I know. What's this Ducks fan talking about? Drew Doughty is a bad contract. I'm not talking about it's bad now necessarily, but you give it till the end of that term at 2026, 2027 season, it's probably going to look like a very, very bad contract to give him $11 million a year. Now, I'm not sure he's worth $11 million now. I'd say he's more worth maybe seven, seven and a half, but eleven is a lot of money to give a defender. Yes, he's won you two cups, helped win you two cups. But he's not that same player as then as he is now. He's still effective in many ways, but he's not as effective as he used to be. Where you can say Jonathan Quick is not effective much, if at all, anymore. All those injuries have caught up, and just the style of play has caught up with him. So his $5.8 million for another year or two to through 2022-2023 season, so two more years. So... That one's a bit more damaging. And I would not be surprised if he ends up getting bought out either this offseason or next. Because I don't think they're going to move that contract. Even keeping half that money, I wouldn't take it. Because he doesn't play up to that. That level that we expect of Jonathan Quick after those playoff runs, I don't think he can do that anymore. Who wants out? I can't say anybody truly wants out of this team right now. They have a lot of, like I said, good up-and-coming young players. This is going to be a very good team fairly soon. All right, top scorer and top goalie this year. 
Shocker, Andre Kopitar is your top scorer. 13 goals, 37 assists, good enough for 50 points. Had a great year again. Not surprised, although it was, definitely was looking better than the previous season. Previous season did not look good for anybody involved with this team. Top goalie technically by wins was Jonathan Quick. 11-9-2, but his stats were worse. 8.98 save percentage and 2.86 goals against average. Now, Cal Peterson, 9-18-5, and five, with 9.11 save percentage and 2.89 goals against average. So, he made more saves, but he did allow a little bit more goals. And his win-loss record was much worse. I honestly, from watching the games I saw of LA, it looked like the team played better in front of Quick than they did in front of Peterson. So, they're going to have to change that because Peterson is the goalie of the future for this team. Unless they acquire somebody else, which is always possible. Always possible, but he's the guy who has to figure this out and be the top guy. Otherwise, he's going to be gone and they're going to get somebody else. Upcoming draft. They have the 8th overall pick, so another top 10 pick for them. Of course, not number 2. But Quinn Byfield probably will be playing for them full-time this next season. Because he, in the six games he played this year, he looked pretty dang good. They're number two overall from last season. So, hey, number eight, you're still going to get someone decent in this draft. Then you also have pick 49, 72, 88, 109, 136, and 168. So not as many picks as they normally have at this point for the last few years, compared to the last few years. But still, eighth overall going to get you something decent maybe not somebody who's going to play this year but soon future outlook this team should be playoff competitive as early as next season i can see them being competitive if those young players who are coming up are effective and they can figure out something defensively and cal pearson can figure out how to be that number one guy if those things come into fruition next season they could be a team to play in the playoffs next year I mean, if we go back to the same divisions, that's not going to be hard because the Pacific Division is god-awful if we go back to the old divisions. If, if. If we do, then it may be in the playoffs. It may be Vegas, Seattle, because honestly, Seattle, whoever they pick, is probably going to be better than the other teams in this division. And LA, maybe San Jose, because this division is just, no. No. Honestly, I think they hope that they stay a part of the other one because eh, they still would be terrible. But a little bit more terrible. Alright. That's what I got for you for this LA Kings season review. I hope you enjoy the video. If you did, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. And make sure to leave a comment what you think. If you agree, if you don't, let me know what you think. Alright. I'll see you all next video. Bye, everybody.